Good afternoon, everyone. Hey, good afternoon, everybody. The date is February 27th, 2023. I'd like to call to order the traffic authority meeting for this date. We have a quorum. We have Commissioner Frank Collier Clemens, Commissioner Tony Lopez. First item on the agenda, um, public comment. I don't know if there's anybody here to address the authority. If you're here to address the authority about an item such as a road closure or a race, uh, we can entertain your comments or questions when that item comes up on the agenda. So is there anybody else that wishes to uh, address the traffic authority for? There is not there. Okay. Next item on the agenda, approve the minutes of the meeting of January 23rd, 2023. I Do move, I have a motion? I yes, move uh, a approval of the minutes of January 23rd. Commissioner Collier Clemens moves the item. Any corrections, deletions, or omissions? I have none here. I have none. Okay. All in favor of approving the minutes as submitted? Aye. 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 Okay. Next item on the agenda, approve the closure of McAllister Avenue and Hollow Tree Road for the abandonment and installation of new Eversource gas main. Do I have a motion to for discussion? Move item two for discussion. Okay. And uh, who from the city is going to address this issue? Hi, Mayor. I'm, I'm happy to address this issue. Good afternoon, uh, honorable commissioners. Um, so today we have Eversource Energy here, uh, Marina San San Tiempo. Uh, talk a little bit about the project, but just a brief overview. It's for an abandonment and replacement of plastic low pressure gas main on McAllister Avenue, Hollow Tree Road, Taylor Avenue, Keith Street, and Harding Street. Uh, it also includes the installation of new low pressure gas mains in Hollow Tree Road and Woodlawn Avenue. Uh, the reason it's before your commission today is that it requires uh, three different road closures, one on McAllister Avenue between Richmond Hill Road and Woodland Avenue, McAllister Avenue between Woodland Avenue and Francis Street, and then also a full closure on Hollow Tree Road between McAllister Avenue and West Couch Street. I'll let uh, Marina just talk about a little bit uh, more about the project um, and the detour plans. Hi, uh, good afternoon, everyone. So uh, this is my first time meeting with the city of Norwalk with regards to this type of a request in the past when we've had certain road jobs we've uh, had the permit give us the allowance with many times we've had to close the road in certain particular areas in this uh, area it seems that we've got certain uh, road closures suggested to close because of the types of excavation that's going to be going on in that area and the constraints of the size of the road and whatnot so we're looking to get some approvals with the city of Norwalk to help us in maneuvering the uh, streets, the traffic along those streets, just for a safe and effective way for us to install our gas pipeline in the areas. As you can see in the overview of the project, you have different areas where they can kind of seek uh, other routes for transportation along the way uh, going on there, you know, in there, in, Let's just say if you're on Taylor Avenue, you can go up and around. There's um, the print, obviously, doesn't say all the street names, but you can kind of go around those areas. And we're just hoping that we can work with the city to allow us this, this closure. I think some of these areas, with the weather, you know, we can be out of these areas within a week's work as we go on. Um, so it will, it will give us a time to get the excavations done and alleviate the traffic that we would have to maneuver along the side, you know, when we're doing it. So that's kind of one of the reasons why we would like that. Christine Swole is on as well from our engineering group if she wants to add anything to this uh, traffic plan that was designed. Chris, Chrissy, do you have anything that you want to add? I do have a question. Yeah. Um, when you say road closure, yeah, it's not totally closed to traffic. It's closed. No. People can still navigate. Yeah, the local traffic. Obviously, the residents in the area they will uh, they will always have 
the ability to enter the work zone to gain access to their homes. And obviously we also will leave a lane available for any uh, emergency vehicles that have to uh, pass through. This is more so if we could close, you know, the top of McAllister down to Woodlawn and just to get in that space to allow us to work in the area without having to deal with any passing through traffic, you know, uh, it, it would be safer for, for all parties involved, to be quite honest with you. And as you can see, and, and you know, Narwhal's, this area does have, um, it can also come through as a cut through street too, for so many people to cut from T Taylor Avenue to Flax Hill to get to Connecticut Avenue. So it's just to alleviate some of that, we would like to close it off in those uh, blocks that they mention on the IF, on our on our plan submitted to the city. Commissioners? So this street is to be, you want it to be closed at the entry and the exit for how long? It would, uh, let's just say we commence work on a Monday with, um, with regards to how much we're able to get into the ground, as long as our digging is, we're not running into too many obstacles, it should be about a week's worth of time. And that's hoping that we don't run into obstacles, unforeseen routes, you know, that would have to deter us to take an extra day or two to go around, whether it's an underground utility that no one saw was in the way. And now we have to figure out our line assignment and uh, just deviate from that proposed stretch of pipe that we were intending to install. So typically, you know, and that's because this is about, I can't see um, in front of me how, what the footage is from the top of McAllister down to Woodlawn. I don't know Marina, how. Yeah. I'm so sorry I joined late, this is crazy. Um, this is about 500 feet. And, right. uh, and one thing to note is that the road closure would only be in effect during the work hours. So right. at the end of the day, the, the crew would, you know, repave what we opened up and uh, and remove the road closure signs and the road would be open. Yeah. Okay, and those hours or what? We have uh, 7.30 to 4 or 4.30. I forget what's on the permit. Maybe Wilbur might know. It, I forget. I Or Drew, they might have it. Okay. I mean, this is Wilbur with uh, Norwalk DPW. Um, we, as DPW, issue the permits for encroachment of the road in order to do the work. Yep. Um, as per of a permit, uh, we enforce the noise ordinance within the city. So that does allow um, work to commence from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m., I believe. Typically, the crew would finish up around 4 o'clock. Yeah. A normal okay. work day is about, we, we begin with getting a bucket in the ground around 7.30 a.m. And we typically have crews cleaned up and out of the area by 4 p.m. How will the, the through traffic, Ms. Santa Temple, um, be handled or mitigated, particularly either the residence delivery and so forth, and what yeah. detours are being um, uh, placed you know, for the so traffic? With regards to the detour plan, uh, I'm not, I have not reviewed the plans myself yet, but uh, we do have, we hire the police department to assist us with moving traffic. And, um, and then we bring them into our job briefs in the morning and we just kind of let them know the area that we're going to be working, the vicinity from point A to point B. And we advise them what we have approved with regards to the permit on how we have to navigate the traffic in that area. So we have the assistance of our uh, of our police department that helps us out with that. So obviously, presumably, in other words, the the residents of the streets or delivery, all those that that's good. They they're all be guided, correct? Absolutely. And I can add to that, um, Commissioner Lopez. Uh, TMP has reviewed the detour plans. Uh, I found them accept acceptable and there is a uh, detour signage along the entire routes um, in affected streets to guide any deliveries to anyone's household as well. Okay. It's a fully signed detour. And has there been any communication to the very residents that are affected in any way, shape or form? Yes. Are they aware of it? 
yes, we uh, on, and this is just because of um, this meeting, but just so y'all know, Eversource has uh, letters that go out to not just the customers of Eversource, but all the residents in the area of a project before we start. And they have my contact number on those letters, as long as well as the contractor that uh, won the, the bid for installing the gas pipeline. So in this case, it's Burns Construction. So they have two uh, points of contact for both organizations on the letters, and it tells them the streets that we'll be working on. It tells them the hours that we start work and end work, and it gives them about a range of how long the project will take. Uh, we don't, we're not just installing gas main. After we install gas main, then we have to transfer all the gas services. So they have to be aware that you know there's going to be construction in their area in their residence for a month or so. And on the on the correspondence you mentioned on the contacts specifically for them to contact in the event of anything. Correct. Okay. So this is going to last for you said about a month. Uh, a month is actually less. We would it typically takes a good month and a half to two months total to do a full project from start to end that Eversource does. And that's the gas main is one part, but the gas main is the heaviest part. That's the part that's going to affect the uh, the the TMP plan with you. When it comes, I'm to sorry, this, I missed that. The what affect the what? The traffic plan. The traffic plan. So we won't be needing to close the road when we go on to the services. Okay. The gas main is really like because at, if you just to give you a visual, if we are going to install 120 feet, that means you're going to get a 120 foot trench that day on the road. Rather, you go to transfer service, you're just doing uh, a bell hole at the to make that main connection and then the trench to the home which is you know minimal you're just utilizing that space in front of the house you're not utilizing a whole 120 feet so for those trenches in front of the house to connect them to the new gas line that does not require street closure not at all no. okay this is just for the main install portion and uh chrissy or um I think it's Garrett, you mentioned there were three streets in total on this project that we are, we put in for the road closure? Uh, three sections, so two sections yeah. of McAllister and then one um, one section, I believe it was for uh, Hollow Tree. Hollow Tree, uh, yeah, and I, uh, just to add one note, so uh, like Marina said, the section that's on the screen right now, about 500 feet, that section would be uh, this way for a week during work hours only. Then, you know, when we, get to the next section of McAllister, that would be about another week. Um, and then hollow tree, I think is just a, a little bit longer. So that would maybe be a few maybe, days, you know, maybe two weeks, yeah. I think. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, these, these road closures won't take place for the entire duration of the project. It's just the segments of time where we're working in this area. Any further questions from the commissioners? No, I have no questions. Concerns from the police department or TMP? Uh, no, no further concerns. No concerns, sir. Well, I have uh, Eversource here. I'll take a little bit of liberty. One of my bone of contentions is how the trenches are repaired after the Eversource crews leave. And I get a lot of complaints about that from the public and I drive all over town and sometimes it's like driving over a washboard. I know there's settlement and we have to account for that, but still we need to, you need to do a better job of repairing those trenches so that the road is brought back to where it was before you started digging. Agreed. Okay. So uh, all in favor, I'll call the vote. Aye. Aye. Aye, motion carries. Next item, number three, can I have a motion to move that forward? So moved. Commissioner Lopez, uh, who's going to handle this, uh, Mr. Valella? So we have uh, Drew Bernoulli-Mie from uh, Public Works and Wilbur Jerome to speak to this item. Okay. Good afternoon. 
Good afternoon. So um, we have a, a very large uh, drainage project uh, where we're improving. Um, we have very bad uh, flooding in the area of uh, Saddle Road and, and Friendly Road. And in order to um, alleviate um, a lot of the flooding that we get there, we have to increase the size of the culvert that crosses Dry Hill Road um, at, at Carlin Street. And so where we're crossing uh, Carlin Street, uh, we have a, a box culvert that we're going to be installing. So this is a this drainage culvert is is eight feet wide and five feet high. Um, and so when we go to install that culvert across the road, we're going to have a very large uh, trench box in in the street uh, that takes some time to to set up. Uh, we have a cutoff wall that needs to be poured in concrete underneath where, where that box culvert is going to be set on top of the cutoff wall. So between setting the, uh, the trench box, uh, pouring concrete and letting that concrete set, uh, relocating the, the gas main, which will also happen while uh, we have that trench open, and then finally the installation of the, of the box culvert itself, um, because of the magnitude of, of that reconstruction that's, that's happening at that one point, um, we do need um, a hard closure um, right on Dry Hill Road uh, for, uh, we, hope, we hope to be finished within one week, uh, but we do uh, state within here uh, up to two weeks to be on the conservative side. Um, but, uh, but hopefully within one week, um, we'll be able to limit the, that point closure. So with that point closure, uh, it means just that that one point will be impassable to, to any of the public, um, uh, local or through traffic. And so this, this traffic plan is so that the through traffic uh, will be diverted away, uh, away from that area, but the, all the local residents will still be able to access their driveways. The point of closure uh, will not obstruct anyone from accessing their 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 driveways. Well, it sounds as if the road will be closed co going into a certain spot, and then on the other side, so you can't actually pass the entire road. Uh, you, you yeah, you can't, won't be able to get past the the trench uh, with the machine and the trench and 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 the equipment and the materials. There's there's no way for us to keep an an opening, and and. Um, so, so that's right. Uh, I, I'm, you can't see my cursor, so I'm not sharing the screen. Sorry, Garrett, if you could just, uh, put, yeah, your, your cursor is actually in that one point. So, so that, that ward, of course, is actually just a little bit, uh, south, um, uh, the, uh, the GPS, uh, uh, the Google stream is a little bit off by one property, but it's right at the intersection. And so anyone heading north on Dry Hill Road, will simply be diverted left along Carlin and then to, to Newtown Avenue. Uh, and then anyone coming, trying to come in from Murray Street will be uh, diverted if they're, if they're coming from the east direction, uh, they'll be diverted to Newtown Avenue. If they're coming from Newtown Avenue, uh, they could get through, through a sissy way to get into this area if they're trying to get in here. But the local traffic will still be at all these houses in between will all have access. But anyone north of the closure will have access from Murray Street or Fairweather in Three Seasons. Uh, anyone coming um, south will be diverted at, at Carlin Street. Are you um, <laughs> going to notify the emergency response? Uh, because it's going to be a, a delay in responding if they have to. Uh, go a certain route that they're not used to. Exactly. In fact, uh, in fact, while we're performing work now, we're we're currently on a local on a local street on Daphne Drive, and there are some times that we have to conduct you know a point repair. Um, but because it's all local traffic, we manage it locally. But we do notify the uh, road closure uh, email address on a daily basis as to where any kind of a point closure might be so that they know exactly what direction to come from in order to address any emergency at any particular home. 
commissioners and has the uh, have the residents also been not notified here as well so the the resident the, the two residents most impacted we actually have um uh an easement there and i have been in communication with with both the resident on the corner of carlin and the resident on dry hill road so our our culvert actually goes through their properties through an existing easement so we have an existing easement between those properties and they know what's happening um and we would come out uh i would propose maybe uh posting something like this on our website whenever we get closer to the time of, of closure the closure we expect to happen um the earliest it'll happen will be the end of march uh otherwise it'll happen at the beginning of uh april um but we are going to wait until the asphalt plants are open so that by the time we uh finish our work and we close up the trench uh we could put back a uh, hot asphalt um to open the street back up commissioner collier clemens uh <laughs> There are a lot of detours uh, to this particular project, and I, it, it's going to really be crucial that you have good detour signs for people who are not familiar with the area who might just be coming there and, and you have a sign that says, you know, turn left here, whatever, and then when you get there, you have no idea where else to go. I'd just like uh, to have complete detour signs so people will know what to do when they get to the end. Well, say, for instance, when they get to Newtown Avenue or when they need to go over to a CC way, uh, because sometimes those detour signs are not very helpful. Yes, these, these signs are only advanced notification of the actual detours. The actual detour signs are only where the arrows are. So anyone heading south on Dry Hill Road, even if, so it says local traffic only. So that's so that through traffic knows to go to Newtown Avenue. If they ignore that sign and they come down Dry Hill Road, they'll be able to come down up until Three Seasons Lane. At Three Seasons Lane, there will be an actual detour sign telling them to go down Three Seasons Lane to, to Newtown Avenue. Um, and then heading north, it'll just be a hard closure. We'll have a barrier right across the street there. They'll, They'll have no choice but to take Carlin to Newtown Avenue. Okay. Thank you. My question to follow up on Commissioner um, Clemens is when they get onto Newtown, when they're diverted to Newtown Avenue and they make that left off of Fairweather Drive and they make that left, I was trying to follow along, will they then be directed with the appropriate um, detour sign to come in through where? So, so if someone's heading south on Dry Hill Road, no, 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 hold on, stop, no, no, oh. no. Take me back to Dry Hill Road. You're on Dry Hill, and they're going to be forced to go through Three Seasons Lane, correct? Okay. They go through Fairweather Drive. They make a left on Newtown Avenue, and they need to get to where they need to get to. And my question is to follow up on Commissioner Clemens: Where would they be directed to go into? Right there, where you have your cursor? No. Yeah, so, so if they're trying to get right on the other side of that closure, yes, they would take a left on Carlin. But depending on their destination, they might just choose to follow Newtown Avenue all the way, all the way to Route 1. It depends on what their destination is. But the notification or notice as detour signs will be at least directing them accordingly, correct? Yeah. So, so if the commission is asking for additional detour signs at Weather and at Carlin, we can we can put signs there. We just don't want to detour anyone that's heading down. We don't want confusion for anyone just heading north, heading south down Newtown Avenue. We don't want anyone heading down New, Newtown Avenue to think that they need to take a left. Um, right. No, no, I understand what you're saying. But if I were on Dry Hill coming south and, and I were directed to take three season lanes and Fairweather Drive, just like Commissioner Clemens, and I come down on Newtown, I'm going to ask myself, now what next? Where is the next sign to direct me to where I want to get to? That's what I'm saying. 
but uh, but I don't know what that destination is. So do you want a uh, a detour sign just? Well, that's that's the, wait, 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 the destination is to get to where I need to get to somewhere on Carlin because that's where I was trying to get down on Dry Hill Road. That's what I'm saying. Drew, I think hearing uh, Commissioner Lopez's concerns, I think we can add a, a street name sign um, for Dry Hill Road detour on New Town That's Road, what I'm saying. Yeah, Carlin, uh, we, we don't have an issue with that. Yeah, because then it will get confusing and frustrating for, the, for them. I've been through something like that where I haven't seen, okay, what next? Under, understood. I, I think Newtown Avenue is a good, well-known street that runs parallel with, with Dry Hill Road. So there's a lot of good options uh, for, for drivers to, to take um, around this around this point. I have no further questions. Uh, Mayor, you're on mute. Mayor, I believe you're muted. Of course I was. <laughs> <laughs> if there's no concerns from the police department, I'll call the vote. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Item number four. Thank you. Approve roadway detour, uh, sanitary sewer abandonment for Norwalk WPCA on East Wall Street between Knight Street and Brook Street. Do I have a motion? I so move. Commissioner Collier Clemens moves. Uh, who's going to handle this? Is that going to be Drew again? No, actually, we have uh, Joe Leone from Holzner Construction to talk about the sanitary sewer abandonment. Okay. Uh, it's for the Norwalk WPCA. Good evening, Mayor. Good evening, Commissioners and Norwalk Department of Public Works reps. Um, it's the first meeting I've, I've been in like this, and I appreciate the formality. Uh, just wanted to talk with you about our project. Um, so our goal is to install a uh, hydraulic cement plug in a 30-inch RCP pipe uh, in a manhole in Wall Street. Um, so if you look at the, the picture Garrett's had on there, um, it's going to be in the center of that, that red area there. There we go, one more. <laughs> uh, so ba basically the, the reason why this is being done is because um, the parking lot at Landmark Square under heavy rainfall events um, would flood uh, due to the mixed nature of the sanitary sewer, um, causing a you know a unsafe unsafe flooding event uh, in in that area. Uh, so basically, we ended up building a bypass structure within that parking lot, and that work is complete, and we have diverted flow, and now it's time for us to abandon this uh, in Wall Street. So the flow uh, in this manhole is predominantly running parallel in Wall Street. So uh, basically it's a 36 inch pipe that uh, operates at around uh, 4,000 gallons a minute. Um, and because of that high flow, we are unable to do the work in our manhole without installing uh, two bypass pumps to reduce our flow. So these are two eight inch bypass pumps with temporary power pipe um, that would be laid down on the ground. Um, it's our goal to set this up on uh, a Monday, uh, ideally Monday, uh, March 6th, um, with, with your permission, of course. Um, perform this bypass, set our plug, and then remove this bypass. And it's likely that this work will take 12 hours. So it's our goal to set this up between uh, 12 or 7 a.m. and 7 p.m. Will um, traffic flow both ways in that area? No, sir. Um, so if the initial response from the DPW, Garrett and his team were that we should set up a detour to allow eastbound traffic to uh, proceed through the area. Um, that, that, that's a primary route towards uh, I-95. 
So uh, essentially we would have an officer uh, set the signal to flash yellow at the Wall Street and Main Street intersection. Uh, and they would be guided through a series of signs um, from Main Street to North Ave and from North Ave to East Ave uh, to you know, get, get to that destination. Um, we will also have a flagger um, in the closure uh, at the intersections of High Street and Ninth Street to um, accommodate traffic local to the area. Um, and basically we would have our, our cones set up in, in that uh, configuration that you saw above. Um, so we would protect our area with drums and we would maintain access to the local businesses. And um, we, we have notified local businesses. It was our goal to minimize um, the excavation with this project. Originally we we're to dig across the entire street um, to abandon an underground tunnel around this pipe. Um, but we made an effort to do it from inside the structure itself to minimize our impact in the road, impact on you know, the local businesses and local you know, public. So I, I did reach out to the local businesses. I notified them of our intention to work. I reviewed their business hours. Um, it's ideal for us to do this work on a Monday and Tuesday. Um, and basically this effort would uh, require three days of this detour to be set up. So Monday would be a 12 hour day, 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Day two uh, would likely just be a half day, 7 a.m. to 12 p.m. And day three would be uh, a full shift of eight hours from 7 a.m. to uh, 3.30 p.m. And um, can, I, can I ask a question? I know yes, sir. that going Main Street to Cross Street, that's a really, um, the traffic queues up there quite heavily at times. So why would you not divert them down Knight Street, up Route One, and down and back down Park Street? Uh, that that could you know be a potential possibility. I think um, Knight Street is uh, very very tight. So they have it's a one way street, um, and they also have parking on one side. So the the lane width for say larger vehicles such as um, tractor trailers or anything like that, they would they would have a difficult time on that street. Um, they would be able to make it through, but uh, definitely be very tight. I was saying it seems like a really long detour to go all the way around just to get on the highway or to get down on East Avenue. I don't know what the commissioners think, but that's just my observation. No, no question about the long detour, but the other issue, potential issue on 9th Street, besides it being a narrow street, and because of that, um, is the um, the buildup of traffic onto uh, Cross, meaning it's going to be a hell of a time to get into Cross if you're on night. It's going to be the same way if you're on Main Avenue, because you come up to that little triangle, the little rotary there, and yeah. people... People stop at the red light at at, uh, at Camp Street, and then cars coming towards uh, Stu Leonard's on Cross Street. Um, they're not very likely to start letting people in. That's my concern. It, so I think you need to have to allow for both. Is it possible to allow for both night and main, or not? Well, I, I think you need to have maybe some extra traffic control, um, whether it be a police officer or a flagman, to stop traffic. If you go, if you go up to, um, if you go up. Uh, Main Avenue to Cross Street, you have that little uh, thing in the middle of the road, little, you yep. have to go to the right. Yeah. And people on Cross Street are going to be backing up during heavy times of traffic. And they're not, and then you have a, a traffic light at Camp Street, which turns red, and people back through the intersection. I, I, have, a, I have a difficult time getting through that area under normal circumstances. That's just my, that's just my concern. Well, there's a po the possibility. So we have two officers and a flagger. Um, one officer was gonna be at the end of our lane closure um, just to provide uh, a presence um, for, for people going westbound on East Wall Street. Um, but, you know, 
we could replace that with a flagger and send uh, the officer to Cross Street if, if that would be preferred. I know. Chief, uh, what are your thoughts? I, yeah, just looking at this is going to cause significant delays because you have uh, school buses and you have the route, the, the city buses that are going to be impacted because you're starting at 7 a.m. Um, definitely one officer at Wall and Main. I would suggest an officer at Main and Cross to manually cool. control uh, the box with the switch. Yeah. He could uh, cycle the lights, but you're also going to have uh, people cutting down Park Street to get to East Avenue, so they, they won't follow the traditional uh, right. What you have read uh, checkered here, they will call. They'll take it right onto Park Street, so we'll see some significant delays on uh, East Avenue and Park Street at that uh, intersection there. So I would suggest three officers: one at your site, one at Wall and Main. And one at Main and Cross to manually control uh, traffic there uh, to the mayor's point. Um, that's going to be busy all day and it's going to be very bad in the morning. I have I have done everything I could to minimize the amount of time that, that we would be in the road. Uh, unfortunately, to set up the bypass pumps and manage flow, uh, you know, it's going to take half the day just to set it up for us to perform our work. So try. I, I will try and squeeze it into off, off, off hours when I can, but um, unfortunately the duration that, that we're required to do this work is, is beyond the gap between rush hours. Understood. I, I don't think what we're saying was optional. <laughs> I think we're saying it needs to be done in a different way because right, what you have right now is not acceptable. What about, what about the people that take North Avenue, and then they turn down High Street in order to avoid that intersection at Main and Cross to get to Wall Street uh, to go on into town or wherever they're going because they they just really don't want to get caught up in that intersection there at Main Street. Uh, if someone takes a left, if they are going, is that east? I mean, going. That's going west. I don't know what's going. But Sorry. anyway, but if they take a left there on high and they come down to Wall Street, would they be able to continue on Wall Street to uh, Belden Avenue? Mm -hmm. They would be able to do that? Yes. Yeah, one, one point of clarification for the detour. It maintains uh, westbound traffic through all of East Wall Street. So anyone that came down High Street and took a right onto East Wall would be able to go towards Wall and Belden. Okay. So the work is going to be okay. I see. Main Avenue over to East Avenue or Park Avenue. Okay. My recommendation is that you work with the police department and come up with a plan that um, helps traffic flow a little bit more smoothly and that you have um, adequate flagging people and police officers in place to um, help the queue when they start queuing up. Um, like I said, especially in the area of Cross Street and Main Avenue. Um, that's a very challenging area under normal circumstances. So that would be my recommendation, Chief. Uh, what are your thoughts? Yes, we're going to at least three, a minimum of three officers. One at the site, one at Wall and Main, one at Cross and Main uh, for traffic control there. And uh, we're going to have to have some signage to make sure when people come down southbound on High Street that they don't take a left back into the construction site. And you're going to have to uh, possibly put out as much messaging prior to this as we can through VMS signs or social media. Um, possibly so people know what's uh, coming up. And this is this is scheduled to start on Monday, March the 6th. Yes, ma'am. Okay. So that's a week from today. Okay. Yes, sir. So um, if the motion could be modified or amended 
to say that uh, the contractor will meet with the police department and set up a, a more effective detour and then if the police department satisfied uh, it'll it'll be uh, the, the commission will approve it understood thank you any further discussion i have none mayor none so again the the motion is that we'll prove it subject to the contractor meeting with the police department and establishing adequate traffic control and adequate detour signage um, and a better detour. And once the police department approves it, it it'll, it'll move forward. Okay, I, I make that motion. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye, Aye. motion carries. <laughs> Okay, I think that's it on this agenda. Am I correct? You are correct. Next meeting is Monday, March 20th. Motion to adjourn. I move to adjourn. Commissioner Collier Clemens at 4.43 p.m. We are adjourned. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.